The summer event has arrived in Forge of Empires, and it'll be here for just over a month. It's pirate-themed, we've got a new-ish minigame, and we've got a lot to talk about. Let's start with one of everyone's favorite parts, the main building. The 4x5 trading post has 9 levels, with a final 10th level that can only be reached with the golden upgrade, known as the Buccaneer's Bay. The good news, you will be able to get the golden upgrade in fragments from the trading post as well as from the quest line and grand prizes. You may even be lucky enough to get the full upgrade by the end of the event for free. The level 9 trading post provides happiness, population, and coins, as well as up to a 19% attack boost for attacking armies, up to a 29 defense boost for attacking armies, and up to a 30% attack boost for defending armies to help you out a little bit in the 5th level of guild expeditions. You also get up to 14 forge points, up to 24 random goods, a 100% coin boost, and thankfully one fragment of the Buccaneer's Bay Golden Upgrade. This means that if you complete all the quests, it will take about 120 days to get that golden upgrade, less if you have the blue galaxy to double some of those fragments. That's not all though. There's also a random production with a chance of 25% each for either a fragment of a 300% attack or defense for attacking army boost, which we'll talk more about later, or a 50% chance at a fragment of the Buccaneer's hideout selection kit, which will take 100 fragments to assemble. So what does the golden upgrade do to top that? Besides a nicer look, it'll give you a little bit more happiness, population, and coins than the trading post, as well as up to a 24% attack boost and up to a 39% defense boost for attacking armies, and up to a 40% attack boost for defending armies. It also produces up to 18 forge points, up to 30 random goods, and still the 100% coin boost. The random production is still here, with the fragments of the attack boost being up to 3, and the fragments for the Buccaneer's hideout kit being up to 4. Oh, and in case you wanted more new stuff, don't worry. We have a total of 6 more new buildings and many new items. Starting first with the Cartographer's House, this is a 2x3 building that will provide up to an 18% attack boost for attacking armies on top of up to 8 forge points. The most valuable part though is that it gives 3 fragments of the Trading Post Level 1, Trading Post Upgrade, or Buccaneer's Bay Upgrade at odds of 10, 80, and 10% respectively. This means that you can average about 1 full Buccaneer's Bay every 500 days. Think of it like the Keymaster's Guardhouse from the Anniversary event. However, you can actually get this building with diamonds instead of real money via the treasure maps. We'll talk more about that mechanic later though. The next new building is the 2x2 Skull Cave, which will provide up to a 20% attack boost for attacking and defending armies, along with up to 6 forge points. This one doesn't require a road connection, however you probably won't be getting this one as it's only available in the calendar reward chest, which you have a very small chance of being able to get for free. Free. The next three buildings can be grouped together, but don't discount them. They're actually really good. Each of the Buccaneer's hideouts buildings is only one by one and will not require a road connection. The Hidden Goods gives one forge point up to a 2% defense boost for attacking armies, one fragment of each of 100% and 200% attack boost for attacking army items, three current era goods, and two previous era goods. The PYR8 Marauder, or Hyrit Marauder, provides up to a 4% defense boost for defending armies, one fragment of each of 100% and 200% defense boost for attacking army items, and also one artillery unit. That's right, this tiny little building has the same efficiency of troops per tile as a level 72 Alcatraz. Last and least of these, the Paradise Rose will give you up to a 2% attack boost for defending armies, and one fragment each of a 100% defense boost and attack boost for attacking armies. It kind of falls short of its fellow hideouts, and doesn't provide anything extra like the other two. You'll be able to get the selection kit for the choice of one of these three buildings from your training post or Buccaneer's Bay, so even if you can't pick up too many during the event, your city will be overflowing eventually. With the Buccaneer's Bay, you'll be able to get one selection kit every 50 days, or about 7 of them per year. The last new building, the Viceroy's Villa, is actually a golden upgrade to a previous favorite. Remember the old Governor's Villa? It can now be upgraded to the Viceroy's Villa. 
For the most part, this upgrade adds a little bit to the governor's villa's values and adds in attack and defense boosts for defending armies. In total, it gives happiness, population, and coins, as well as up to a 40% attack boost for attacking armies and a 30% attack and defense boost for defending armies. You'll also get 12 forge points, 45 goods, and 5 units. If it sounds too good to be free, that's because it is too good to be free. Currently, you can only get the Viceroy's Villa upgrade from the event pass. And while that may be all the buildings, we've still got tons of new items. We have six new boost bottles with three for attack and three for defense for attacking armies, which give massive boosts of 100, 200, or 300%. Now, you might be thinking, besides the size of the boost, these sound pretty similar to the red attack boost bottles. And you're right. The difference is that these new ones will only last half an hour. And like the other attack boosts, they cannot be stacked. This means that only one may be in effect at the same time. We also have the Summer 2023 Epic Selection Kit, containing the base buildings and upgrades for the Governor's Villa, Pirate's Hideout, Crow's Nest, Guard Post, The Ship, Stranded Boat, Hammock, Sunken Treasure, and Privateer's Boathouse. And yes, the event pass has made a return. It seems that this time the majority of the value comes from the event pass being the only place to get the Viceroy's Villa upgrade kits. Additionally, it is the only place to get the 300% attack or defense boosts for attacking armies items. You'll also be able to pick up some exclusive portraits, as well as some renovation kits, 1-up kits, and finish all special building items. Note that some of these prizes have been changed since the event ended on beta. After all of this info about prizes though, let's shift gears and talk about how to win them. The minigame is basically a carbon copy of the winter events, where there are a bunch of tiles on the board, each representing a different prize. You can shuffle the board and flip over tiles at random for the cost of 10 doubloons and win some prizes. However, there are some special tiles on each board that you will come across. The daily special tile lets you win today's daily special. The reveal shows the contents of two of the remaining unflipped tiles and gives you three doubloons back. The double will double the rewards of the next tile you open. The key, which only appears on about every other board, will give you a calendar key or key pieces, which we'll discuss later on. And the shuffle will reset the board back to the beginning. While this tile can be annoying to win, it will give you the full cost of 10 doubloons back, making it essentially a free tile. With each tile that you flip, you'll also receive a random amount of progress from 1 to 2, and by my testing, it seems to give you on average between 1.55 and 1.6 progress instead of the 1.5 that you might expect. For once, the randomness is actually on your side. Every 20 progress will then net you a grand prize, and you will need to reach 280 progress to get all the upgrades for the trading post in order to get it started producing golden upgrade fragments. It may also be possible to get the golden upgrade for free, so long as the grand prize changes haven't moved the gold upgrade fragments to later in the past. Besides grand prizes and tiles though, there are two other ways to win rewards. Some of the tiles will give you a treasure map. These tiles are the shuffle, reveal, double, or daily special. Once you get a map, you can then choose one of two rewards that you'd prefer, choose both rewards for a fee of diamonds, or shuffle the rewards for the cost of some diamonds. And after that, the reward will be added to the bar at the bottom. You can only get these rewards with a payment of about 3,000 diamonds, but hear me out, this is actually a good thing for diamond farmers. Since the cartographer's house can only be won from the treasure maps, it enables a way for free-to-play players to get something similar to the Keymaster's guardhouse, but without paying for the event pass. The odds of seeing the cartographer's house are pretty small though, and you might have to shuffle the prize pools to get it, so you could be spending a lot of diamonds in order to get one. In total, what you see on screen is the full list of prizes that you could win from the treasure maps on beta, most notably including golden upgrade fragments and key parts. However, this list is actually wrong. The prizes have been improved, but we don't know what is on that new list. Additionally, you'll be able to find calendar keys as a reward from the minigame. The first time you find the key on any given day, you'll get the full calendar key for that day's box. Every time after that, until the next day, you'll get one calendar key piece and it will take four of these pieces to assemble one key. 
You can also win calendar key pieces from the daily challenges, averaging about 1.8 key pieces per day, which will result in about 14 full keys over the course of the event if you complete every daily challenge. Since the event lasts 32 days, you will need 32 calendar keys to open all the boxes in order to win the Aztec chest, which will contain a portrait, the skull cave, a trading post selection kit, governor's villa selection kit, 200 forge points, and 300 goods. However, odds are you won't be winning this one for free. With the 14 keys from daily specials, you would have to win 18 keys from the minigame in order to get all 32, and there just aren't enough doubloons for that, especially when you consider that the key only appears about 50% of the time. So, if we're not going for the calendar, are there any strategies that we can do? Unfortunately, not really. Since it's all about just randomly flipping tiles, there's not much to it besides just randomly guessing. The only strategy that we can use is when we find the reveal tile. Since it shows two other tiles, it can give us a tiny bit more information than just pure randomness. If it shows the double tile, choose that one first, it's better to pick it up instead of wishing that you had. Then, if it reveals the daily special or the key, choose those. If it shows the shuffle, you can search for the daily special and then reset your board immediately after. And if it shows just a normal prize, then we can ignore that tile and save our doubloons. Of course, after all of these strategies, what are the odds of winning all the upgrades needed for the trading post? It actually looks really promising. You get 2,265 doubloons for free, so with an average of 1.55 progress per tile, that would mean about 340 total progress. However, since some of the tiles give you doubloons back, such as the shuffle, the math actually works out to about 400 total progress, not including any doubloons from incidents. Luckily for us, the incidents will be giving us plenty of doubloons, so no need to worry. Per the grand prize list on beta, you'd have to reach 440 progress to get the full golden upgrade, meaning that you would have to win about 200 doubloons from incidents, which is doable. At the very least, you should be able to gain a decent number of golden upgrade fragments by the end of the event. But what about everyone's favorite part? The daily specials that we can win throughout the minigame. If you want the best chance at winning a daily special, then your best bet is to save up all of your event currency for one day, that you see the daily special that you want, and then spend all your currency there. We've got plenty of good daily specials to choose from, including the Buccaneers Hideouts buildings, being the Paradise Rose, Hidden Goods, and Pirate Marauder, Sentinel Outposts, 1-Up and Renovation Kits, the 100% Attack and Defense for Attacking Army Boost Bottles, and even Rogue Hideouts and their Shrink Kits. You'll also be able to pick up several selection kits, including the Privateer's Boathouse, House of Horrors, Olympic Treasury, and Epic 2023 Summer Selection Kit, as well as store building items and finish one event building items. We also can't forget about the five brand new avatars that you can win, with the first one available from the calendar, the second from free through the quest line, and with the last three only available in the event pass. I think that's going to wrap it all up though. If you want to discuss this event more in depth, consider joining my Discord server linked below. YouTube thinks you'd like the video linked on screen now, good luck with the event, and as always, I'll see ye all next time.